that's the first slide. Hey, I'm Michael, and I'm from Antmicro. I'm going to tell you a few words about uh, Renode, which is an open source and flexible uh, simulator for developing embedded systems, including RISC-V systems. Uh, so Antmicro was founded in 2009, and we started developing Renode the year after. Uh, actually, we did that in April, uh, which coincidentally is just a few months before the short summer project, AKA RISC-V. Um, so we're a founding member of the RISC-V Foundation. I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, and what we do is we help people build software-driven products, so various autonomous systems like drones, robots, for applications like mining, military, uh, IoT, and so on. Uh, what we're doing in the RISC-V ecosystem is helping people adopt it and uh, ensuring that they can maximize the benefit of using RISC-V. Uh, we help people build proofs of concept, uh, various uh, demonstrators. Uh, we help with early software development, porting OSs. Uh, uh, we're helping people adopt new workflows, like, for example, software uh, and simulation-driven workflows that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, and we're building various FPGA or FPGA system-on-chip-based systems. Uh, one of the demonstrators you might be familiar with is the badge that we did, uh, but typically we build bigger things, but it's, I think it's pretty cool still. Uh, so why did we go and build Renode in the first place? Uh, so when we started out, but unfortunately also until today, uh, workflows for software development and embedded systems have been fairly dated. There's very little testing going on. Uh, people, generally speaking, uh, rely on things working and they go in the field, run things, and hope for the best. Uh, we wanted to change that. We, we needed a simulator to do this, and we wanted to, it to be fast and also as close to the production stuff that you're going to run in the end in the field as possible. So we wanted to run unmodified software. We wanted to uh, not to have a separate target like you often have in QEMU. You, know, you compile for the simulator. We wanted to run the production binaries. And we wanted it also to be capable of doing multiple nodes, so simulating networks of devices, which in 2010 wasn't so popular, but nowadays it's IoT is everywhere. Um, we also, since we're software people, so we're quite lazy, right? And we wanted to reuse as much as possible and not develop models on and on. So we wanted it to be modular, and we wanted to have a capability to assemble platforms from those modular blocks. We also wanted it to be easy to extend. So one of the things that our developers are most frightened about is us coming and saying, what if we add this feature and that? But it's very easy in our framework, so um, I think it's a big strength. So yeah, we went on and built Renode. And uh, in short, it's an instruction set simulator. It's software agnostic, as I said. It emulates entire socks. So it's, you know, it's uh, both the CPU and peripherals. Uh, we can run multiple nodes in the same execution environment. We write our cores in C, but the peripherals are written in C-sharp or Python or any .NET-based language. Uh, but most of them are actually C-sharp. Uh, what we see as Reno strengths is uh, that we can execute deterministically, or not, if you don't want to. But uh, typically, for testing, for example, you do want to have a repeatable execution. We can do that. Uh, we want, uh, like, what we can do is debug transparently, also in multi-node setup, so you can have several nodes in the same environment, possibly connected over a wireless medium, and debug them all together in the same system. Uh, we can integrate with a lot of tools, um, so I'll tell you about a few of them later. Uh, also, our models are constructed in a way that makes it very easy to add new functionalities without having to add those functionalities in detail to each and every model. You just add it as an interface and then extend that interface. And it's very simple to you know, come up with new features and just implement them. We have a very robust infrastructure for debugging because that's important. Uh, we can do tracing, we integrate with GDB, and so on. Uh, and I think one of the most important things, uh, we like testing and continuous integration is a primary citizen. Uh, we want people to, do, to be able to do that easily. Um, so, yeah, that's what we support. As you might guess from this uh, picture, uh, how Renode and RISC-V fit is very well. Um, I'll try to say why. Uh, you might have seen those words a lot throughout these two days. You know, RISC-V, it's open, it's modular, it's flexible, it encourages reuse. 
uh, and I, I don't think there's need to prove that. And uh, coincidentally, Renode has a lot of the, the same features. It's open source. Um, it has modular building blocks. It's flexible. Uh, and we have a user-friendly language that allows us to easily create new platforms, assembling them from building blocks. So our platform description format is uh, like it's a short excerpt, but it gives you a feeling of what it is. Um, so instantiating new peripherals is quite simple. You name it, you uh, say what class it is, you connect it to the system bus at some address, you set some parameters, and that's it. Assuming, of course, that you have the model uh, building your platform, it might be a system on chip or a whole board or even a set of boards, is very, very simple. Uh, as you might see, this is a RISC-V platform, and this is in fact taken from our work that we did for MicroSemi, who have been so kind to sponsor, uh, first of all, uh, their My5 platform to be included in our framework, but also integration with their soft console IDE, and also adding first-class Windows support. We, we did have some Windows support in the past, but we can only call it first-class now, uh, so we can run Renode on both Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, that's what it looks like. There's no time to do extensive demoing, but uh, in general, uh, the important po point is that uh, the important point is that uh, since the framework is open source, uh, basically we can ship Reno together with Soft Console and allow people to do the same thing wherever they are, whatever they're doing, and you know we don't care. I mean, we hope they do fun things and contribute back, but we, we're not forcing them to. Uh, do anything uh, weird. So there's a lot of things you can do with Renote, and I won't be able to tell you about all the features in detail, but uh, some of the more interesting things is, first of all, you can you know, share your development environment. You can save the entire environment to a file and then give it to someone, and they'll run it. It'll be exactly the same as you left it. Uh, so it really helps in working together on a problem. Uh, we can, you know, for example, record and replay events, so you just you know, record the events you're having, not the entire system in its current state, but the state, what led to the state, and give it to someone for analysis. Uh, we can inject faults, uh, we can simulate the environment, also the wireless uh, surroundings, so we can potentially build fairly complex wireless systems and test against different scenarios, uh, and more, <laughs> of course. Uh, a typical workflow would look like that, uh, and you might be familiar with this if you've been developing any high-level systems or, I don't know, something in web development and so on, but for embedded, this is pretty unusual. So you'd be working on a local PC, you'd have an interactive uh, test environment, debug environment that you'd be running on and on to fix your bugs, but you could also share your work with your colleague, right, who's also running Renote. And uh, even better, you'll have in your company somewhere perhaps, or in the cloud, a CI testing environment where you'll push your code and see if it runs. And only then you'll actually deploy to production. What people typically do in embedded systems, they will you know, push straight to production, hope things work. Uh, or perhaps employ some very, very difficult testing mechanisms that are very expensive to implement. Uh, and as I said uh, before, we developed it for ourselves. So we eat our own dog food. We have those kind of uh, CI systems implemented internally for our own projects and for our customers' projects. And even though you can only see like green and red lights here, it doesn't look very complicated. Underneath, of course, there's a lot of you know, testing infrastructure ensuring that things get actually executed, not only compiled, but also executed in Renode. We don't only support RISC-V. There's quite a lot of platforms we've gathered over the years. Um, for example, Quark sponsored by Intel, quite a few ARM platforms, uh, Zinc from Xilinx. Uh, and I think it's good because we want to enable this workflow for everyone, not just people using RISC-V. Obviously, we want everyone to adopt RISC-V eventually, but we do want to uh, show that you know, this is attainable not only if you use RISC-V. We have quite, quite a few integrations, uh, Soft Console being the most recent of them, sponsored by MicroSemi. Uh, but in general, we can work with different kinds of like robot framework for uh, test writing or various CI environments, uh, Wireshark for network analysis, and so on. And I want to talk about specifically one uh, very important uh, use case, IoT. Uh, we think like, RISC-V is really going to be successful in this domain. And uh, Renote is, uh, incidentally, again, uh, made to work with IoT systems very well. 
Uh, as an example, there's been a very good development uh, this year. Uh, we started working with the Zephyr guys, uh, Intel and related. Uh, and, and we did some demos and we kind of showed how you can use uh, Renode for testing Zephyr based systems, especially multi node ones. And then we got contacted by uh, Riot OS and Contiki NG, two other operating systems, uh, who also wanted to do the same thing. And now we're actually in the main line of those operating systems where you can run Riot binaries or Contiki binaries. Uh, by entering, you know, make Renode into the terminal. And the cool thing about it being open source is that we can bundle it with different kinds of software and enable a lot of people to work with this kind of workflow. So if you're interested, come talk to us. Uh, we can, you know, help you adopt a uh, better workflow for software, uh, integrate with your tools, or implement your RISC-V course. Uh, of course, the cool thing is you don't have to talk to us. You can just go to GitHub slash Reno slash Renode and download it and use it, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, but I do encourage you to also come to us <laughs> because we might have some things that we've already done uh, that perhaps are not yet available uh, in the main line, or perhaps we could share some ideas how to do things better. Thank you.